The celebration festival that will be he held at Soldier Field this Saturday is a tribute to the vision, hard work of many people over many years. Eunice Driver had a wonderful vision to help children with intellectual disabilities realize their full potential in life. And so she and Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Foundation provided the financial support for the first Special Olympics. From that day on, it is clear that the Games were a starting point for improving the lives of millions of individuals. Thanks to those efforts, the Special Olympics have made a positive impact on the lives of more than 2.5 million special athletes and their families around the world. Right here in our city, 5,000 Special Olympic Chicago athletes have the chance to participate in 43 programs held at the Chicago Public Schools and Chicago Park District locations. We all know the important role Justice Ann Burke played in organizing the first uh, uh, event in 1968 during her time at the Chicago Park District. The athletes who participate in the Special Olympics face some very difficult challenges in life. Their spirit is what the 40th anniversary really commemorates. We are celebrating the changed lives, the achieved dreams of people who dared to try something 40 years ago that few thought they could do. The theme of the Special Olympics is dream it, dare it, and do it. Special Olympics Chicago has given an opportunity to individuals with disabilities and they have made the most of it. By expanding their world without fear, by competing with passion, Special Olympians serve as a model for all of us. The Special Olympics focus on what athletes can do. Yes, winning is important to a Special Olympian, but more important, they try to do their best. Sportsmanship they demonstrate inspires all of us. We are now engaged in a very challenging project of bringing the Olympic and Paralympic Games to Chicago in 2016. As I often say, the Olympic Games in Chicago will leave a legacy that strengthens the Olympic movement by building passion for sports, culture, education, and the environment for generations, future generations around the world. The Special Olympic Chicago uh, that began here 40 years ago has created its own legacy that strengthens us all. It's a legacy of courage, joy, participation, sharing of friendship among families, athletes, and the community. I congratulate the Special Olympics uh, Olympians, uh, 40 years of remarkable achievement. I want to thank all the volunteers that have helped over 40 years here in the city of Chicago and their families and all the participants in the Park District and the Board of Education who's truly made a difference in the lives of many young people here in Chicago. I thank you and I encourage everyone to come down to Soldiers Field Saturday and share in this wonderful celebration. Thank you. Justice Ann Burke. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mayor. Well, good morning, everyone. First, let me thank you for your presence today. Like always, Special Olympics is the recipient of the heart's deepest gifts. Thanks for that. I want to acknowledge this morning the very special support of Mayor Richard M. Daley. He would be the first to acknowledge the transforming power of Special Olympics over the past four decades. Like the rest of us, he was there generously giving of his time at Soldier Field, 1968, just finishing law school, volunteering, sort of, as a driver, <laughs> as a driver. <laughs> from Toronto. <laughs> from, <laughs> for all of us. He knows how much gratitude is in my heart over these, all these years. Little did we know that either one of us would be here on the fifth <laughs> floor of City Hall and still growing strong. But, of course, the deep memory of his late father, the Mayor Richard J. Daley, always fills this room and any room and the stadium whenever Special Olympics are at hand. Without his help, as you can imagine, nothing would have taken place. His love for the children of Chicago, especially those children with special needs, always were deep in his heart, and we all feel him near here today. The late president, Bill McFretridge of the Chicago Park District and Dan Channon of the vice president of the Park District were special angels for that in all that has transpired and Jack McHugh who started special children's charities. They gave so generously, lifting all the hurdles away. But I must say that um, no American has done more back in 1968 and every day since to make Special Olympics the international success it is today than Eunice Kennedy Shriver. 
When I look at the events of the past, July 20th, 1968, and it, I realize that I was just little more than um, a girl, although yeah. <laughs> no longer that, um, and a month from the tragedy of her brother Robert F. Kennedy's death, that she actually came here to Chicago for the first games. I could still weep about it. From the very beginning, she had the magic touch. And I remember the very first letter that I received from her about the concept of the games. It was written on stationery from the American Embassy in Paris, where her husband, our Sergeant Shriver, served as the US ambassador. I was little more than girls, I said, when I received the letter from the president's sister. It was an amazing moment in my life and in the life of what has gone on to become the Special Olympics. Of course, Mrs. Shriver had the remarkable capacity to see what could be. I think it is a Kennedy family trait. Her noble spirit lifted the games to the greatness and has become her legacy to the nation. Her family has served so well. She has brought honor to the games and in the process has transformed the vision of the entire world. If you were at Soldier Field on July 20th, 1968, you would know there were actually more athletes on the field than spectators in the stands. There were 1,000 athletes. My family traveled this past October to Shanghai, and it was really hard to comprehend as we sat there, those throngs who came to China, waves of spectators, more than 85,000 who came to cheer on the athletes. All hearts beat the same was the motto. The events of the game told us, in the stillness of my own heart, I knew that was true. It made me so proud to be a Chicagoan, and your faces flashed across my mind. Thank you all for being here today to kick off what will be a memorable weekend celebration. We are all blonder, smarter, more subtle than we were 40 years ago. I was going to say grayer, but I don't want to ever see that. <laughs> but most importantly, what really matters is that our support for all our special athletes remains deep and loving as ever. And thank you for keeping that dream alive. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris Kennedy, President of Merchandise Mark. Chris. About 2,000 years ago, the first Olympics were held uniting the city-states of Greece. They created a higher purpose of unity and teamwork, which provided an example of the power of sports, which would last thousands of years. A hundred years ago, the Greeks once again hosted the first modern Olympic Games in their capital city of Athens. Fifty years later, the great American runner Jesse Owens would put on a performance of sheer will, which would rock back the crowds in Berlin, which that day contained history's worst dictator, Adolf Hitler. Hitler refused to present Owens with a gold medal, but more importantly, Owens refused to be cowed or suppressed. Years later, the world would see the great Rafer Johnson and Cassius Clay in the 1960 games in LA, and together they would firmly establish the notion that a new generation was willing to take up the torch of leadership. In the 1980s, a young American hockey team at Lake Placid would show that freedom and perseverance could overcome the oppressive factory-like power of uh, athletic production of communism. Once again, the lessons of the American Revolution with its notion of freedom and liberty and the dependence on individualism resounded across the country and around the world. The question today may be, which were the greatest Olympic Games ever held? And I'd stand here and submit to all of you that the greatest Olympic Games were not held at Lake Placid, nor were they held in Los Angeles or Berlin or even Athens. But instead, the greatest Olympic event that ever was held was held in Chicago 40 years ago. More than any other games, they fulfilled the greatest Olympic ideal. The Special Olympics taught us of equality and freedom and respect and love of competition and the notion of the athlete as a hero. A few years ago, the University of Illinois held a symposium on the life of Richard J. Daly. They examined his efforts to enhance the schools and build the airports, to revitalize the loop, to improve the nation, and to integrate the city. I think, though, 100 years from now, that the scholars of tomorrow will look back and they will recognize Mayor Daly's efforts to produce the 
Olympic Games here in Chicago in 1968 as his greatest legacy. It was Mayor Daley who reassured Eunice Kennedy Shriver that the private funds from the Kennedy Foundation would be met with public support. It was Mayor Daley who arranged for the Park District to support the efforts of the young Ann Burke. He arranged the support of the Chicago Public Schools. He motivated the police and the fire department and dozens of city agencies which came together to create those first games. We owe Mayor Daley a great debt of gratitude because we who have played with Special Olympians are a favored few. Here in the last half century or so, we have witnessed the growth of an organization which is unparalleled in history. In 40 years, it has grown from small playgrounds and play lots and park districts in Chicago and elsewhere to thousands of locations throughout the country and around the world. It has crossed environmental barriers, ethnic frontiers, and religious boundaries. It has penetrated the Iron Curtain and won the hearts of the world's most benevolent governments and its fiercest dictators. The Special Olympians are our greatest legacy, and Mayor Daley was its greatest champion. We are lucky today to be in the mayor's old office in the anticipation of being at Soldier Field to welcome back athletes, to celebrate our legacy, and to look boldly to our future. The Special Olympics gives us one more opportunity to showcase our city to the entire world and to say with one proud and prominent voice that we are truly and unequivocally the greatest city in America. Thank you. Thank you. Drew Berlick, President of Special Children's Charities. Good morning. Justice Burke, you have been a true inspiration, and it is my job to make sure that I channel your energy, passion, and commitment to make the next 40 years as meaningful as the last of 40 years have been. As Justice Burke said, Special Children's Charities is the fundraising arm of Special Olympics Chicago. Working with the Chicago Park District and the Chicago Public Schools, we provide year-round sports training, recreational and social programs for the children and adults of Special Olympics Chicago. Jack McHugh founded our organization in 1969 and today it is supported by a group of local business leaders. Our primary mission is to promote, foster and encourage physical and mental health and improvement for children and adults with intellectual disabilities and closely related developmental disabilities. I gotta tell you, I love being part of what truly is a movement. It's a movement that started 40 years ago right here in Chicago and has over time completely transformed how people perceive individuals with special needs. From the perceptions of your neighbor across the street to the, the perception of presidents from countries around the world, perhaps the most importantly, it's changed the perceptions of that special individuals have them of themselves. Instrumental to that effort today are the Chicago Park District Superintendent Tim Mitchell and Chicago Public School Superintendent Arnie Duncan. They have provided a mission and a commitment to individuals with special needs that puts them in a class by themselves. Today, our parks, our recreational programs, and our schools are integrated to reflect the skills and diversity of all children. They have helped to ensure that special needs children, like other children, have the opportunities to play, compete, and grow. Justice Burke noted that in an effort and a part to parcel to Chicago personalities, I, like, I think that's exactly right. This kind of programming can only happen when you have true collaboration and true commitments from the public and private sectors. Here in Chicago, we are fortunate to have those critical elements. And looking ahead, we want to grow and expand our outreach so that we can do even more for our athletes, reach and encourage more people, and enhance our athletic programs. I want to acknowledge Pat Patricia Holden of Bank of America, who is our primary sponsor for the 40th anniversary celebratory event and Frank Libby from the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters, who has also provided their generous support. It is because of this support and the Special Children's Charities in partnership with the City of Chicago, Chicago Park District, and Chicago Public Schools that we are able to create this special day of commemoration and celebratory festivities. It makes all the difference in the world that we are able to host an event that can accommodate the general public. Chicagoans have been instrumental in their continued support of Special Olympics, both locally and internationally. And so it is only fitting that they should have the opportunity to take pride in our anniversary and enjoy the festivities. And it is that reason that I urge everyone to come out and celebrate with us on Saturday. This isn't just a public event, it is truly a public celebration. We are celebrating 40 years of excellent work, commitment, courage, and dedication. It is an opportunity to let our athletes bow in the very same place 
where their predecessors have paved the way for this movement 40 years ago. So please come out and join us. You haven't really smiled until you've seen the faces on these young people when they tell you that these are athletic games and competitions mean to them. And on that note, I would like to introduce Mark Affetto, who is one of our Special Olympic Chicago athletes. He is also what we call a global messenger and is in charge with traveling around the world to expand our reach and encourage even more children and adults with intellectual disabilities. Mark was an athlete in the first games at Soldier Field in 1968 and continues to participate in Special Olympic Chicago in many different sports at our Shabona Park program location. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Drew. On behalf of the following athletes, I also, I also like to give a special thank you to everyone standing here with me today without your work, support, and certainly wouldn't be able to celebrate the 40 year, for, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Special Olympics of Chicago. I am proud to say that I have been a Special Olympic athlete since the very first games were held at Shortest Field in 1968, and I'm still going strong. Over the last four years, I have enjoyed competing in different sports such as basketball, for hockey, baseball, soccer, track and field. And I have won gold medals, including the recent win in powerlifting at the state games will hold in June. As an athlete, I can tell you firsthand how important the games have been realizing my own potential, both as an athlete and my self-personal life. Thanks to participation in the Special Olympics, I have not only become a well-around and healthy person, but I also gained so many friends that learned the importance of teamwork. I train four days a week with my Shabona Park teammates. I am sure that they I should they would agree with me when I say that I can't imagine life without these activities. In addition to participating in sports, I have honored of serving as a, a leader through Global Messenger Program for Chicago. As a messenger, I travel for businesses and other groups to spread the wonderful word of the vision of regulations. I love to share my story with others, and, I, and I'm always thrilled when it inspires people to participate. On behalf of all the Special Olympic athletes in Chicago, thank you again to Mayor Daly, Justin Burke, the Kennedy family, and, and special children and charities, to co the recovery sponsors, and everyone who has helped to support our program over the years. We're looking forward to a special activities on Saturday and celebrating four years of fun and games. Very good, Mark. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Frank Libby, Second Vice President, Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters, and Patricia Holden, Senior Vice President, Bank of America, and all the corporate sponsors, uh, Jaffe Q, who is regional corporate sponsor, and many others who have really worked very hard. And I hope the press uh, uh, reads stories about the athletes and the volunteers and the families that have really uh, provided the Special Olympics in 1968. I think it'd be great stories for the media to talk about uh, all those who volunteered and all those who participated in wonderful athletes, even back as, for, uh, as Mark talked about, he was a 1968 uh, uh, participant. Uh, and to me, uh, we'll have Mark working on our 2016 Olympic and Paralympic <laughs> Games, but also the Special Olympics provided 
a whole new insight uh, of uh, children with special needs, dealing with education and dealing with uh, Park District. They're always separate and identified differently. And that really brought them together. And, and Ann worked there for many years and started bringing children together, uh, all children, not just isolating and separating them, which is really important.